Charlene Egger. Carol, thanks so much. Pleasure. While Carol was talking about the weather, we were talking about jigsaws. Yeah. Why was that, you're thinking? Yeah, I love <laughs> it's a It's a good question, I don't you know. You hate them. So Ian Rankin sits down on the sofa, and next thing you know, we're having an argument about jigsaws. What well, can I tell you? I could start an argument in an empty room. You could know? you? Are you just naturally argumentative? No, it's just things I like other people don't like. And as, oh. as we found out, Charlie, you don't like jigsaws. He can they also drive me. There's something about room. a jigsaw that drives me mad, because I'm not I'm not good at them, And but you... Just works for you, does it? It absolutely works. Especially during lockdown, my wife and I found it was just a way of switching off, not thinking about COVID and stuff. And our son would come round, and he was part of our bubble, and so the three of us could sit and do a jigsaw together, and it became a kind of family thing. And always improving because it was art jigsaws or literary jigsaws. Is it because fundamentally you're good at puzzles? As oh. in, did it, you know, is it, is there a thing there just that, that you can work things out, that you can plot things through? Yeah, I mean, I like the fact that at the end, as with a who done it, at the end you've got something that makes sense, and you've started with something that doesn't make sense. Yeah, maybe you've got it. Why are we talking about? Why do you think the conversation <clears throat> gets to jigsaws with Sir Ian Ranking? Well, because there is a Rebus jigsaw, yes, and um, obviously we've got. The, how many books now? 24? This yeah, is the 24? The, the new one is 24, yeah. Yeah, all about Rebus and his battles in Edinburgh's criminal underworld. Um, millions of fans, obviously. The latest instalment does come out next week. Um, and this is your last one for a little while. Well, my wife has said I'm taking next year off on pain of divorce because we were meant to take a year off and go travelling and Covid got in the way. So she said no, t next year no writing, no festivals, no tours, just holidays. So I'm kind of looking forward to that. But every she time... sounds like an awful wife. No, she's she? great. She, she's done all the planning, which is even better. So yeah, so she wants you to go on holiday and have, yeah. and have a break. Yeah, but you know what? If I do get an idea for a story, I'll be sitting there pretending to be tweeting or something, but I'll actually be typing it into my phone. Is, am I right in saying that part of the new Rebus story came about when you were on holiday? You were in, in the Caribbean, is that right? Yeah, it was January this year, and I was in the Caribbean on holiday, and I was, I was panicking because I had a June deadline for a book. And I hadn't written anything yet. And on holiday, it just started to make it started to come to me. It started to make sense. And I would sit on the beach and tap it into my phone as little notes to myself, so that when I got back to Edinburgh, I could start writing. So I would top tip for any writers out there is take a Caribbean holiday. Absolutely. Well, it obviously works, doesn't it, um, Sir Ian Ranking? You keep saying that now, yeah. Does it sound good? And Do you like no, the way I'm it not, sounds? Not, I don't think I'll ever get used to it. I don't think I will ever get used to it. Um, and I've not had the actual sword on the shoulder yet. But um, I remember phoning my sister up, uh, sadly my parents are no longer with me, but I phoned my sister to tell her the good news and she said, aye, but you're still my wee brother. Oh, well, so you, just keep gets you grounded. grounded. keeps you grounded. Tell us about the, the, uh, the writing thing, because um, as you get more well known, and you're, as authors go, I think you're really quite recognisable. Part of the joy of being an author is you sit back, don't you? You sit back in a cafe, in a bar, and you just listen, and you start mm. picking things up. Does that get harder? Do you get recognised more often and are unable to just earwig on life and, and people? Well, I mean, you say that I, I, that I get writers get famous, but, I mean, I could be in a room in a bar with John Grisham and I, I would have no idea, or, you know, somebody else, um, uh, some famous writer, because famous writers, the name is famous, but we don't always know what they look like. In, in Edinburgh, in, you are very well Yeah, in Edinburgh, yeah. I mean, but in Edinburgh, people just go about their... I remember once in Edinburgh, I was walking past a queue of people going into a fringe show, and, and Sean Connery was halfway back in the queue. No special... Nobody was talking to him. He was just a punter. And that's the thing about Edinburgh, is that you, you're just... You're the same as everybody else. But um, I do... I, I walk into bars, and sometimes people say, oh, I've got a story for you, which is quite nice, even if 99 times out of 100... <laughs> It's going to be unusable for whatever reason. I was going to say in your head, it's like your heart's slightly sinking, but but you, you never know, do you? You never yeah. know. It could be the gem. No. And in fact, with this new book, I walked into a bar not long after lockdown um, eased, and I, I saw a guy that I vaguely know, and he had a lanyard. He was wearing a lanyard, and I said, what, what's that about? And he said, I've got COPD, and this tells people that I'm exempt from wearing a mask indoors. And I thought, well, my guy Rebus has COPD, so that became part of the new book. It's a chest condition, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it's like a, a pulmonary disorder. And so Rebus wears his lanyard with his little card on it and tries to get through police cordons because he's no longer a cop. So he, so he puts this on and thinks he can just breeze through and go to the crime scene, which, of course, 
never quite works. Tell me, I, I, I mean, I'm thinking, we met once or twice before, and I'm not sure if, if you've gone through this with me before, but when you wrote Rebus, first of all, did you in your own head have a very clear picture of what he looked like? I assume you did. And was that at odds with what later appeared in how, how he's depicted? Well, I mean, to come back to the jigsaw again, the one thing that I'd said they couldn't do in the jigsaw was to represent Rebus. So all you get is the outline of his head. We don't get a visual representation of him because I don't really know what he looks like. I'm looking out through his eyes. He was meant to be around for one book. He was 40 years old. He was quite macho, quite vigorous, um, didn't mind getting in a fight. And of course, having lived with him for almost 30 years now, he's, he's changed. He has changed. He's become, he's, he's become more thoughtful. The, the, the jobs that he, do, that he has done in the past have changed him. He now has health issues. He's moved from an upstairs apartment to a ground floor because he can't manage stairs anymore because of his health condition. So he's kind of just up one step ahead of me in the aging game. And he's kind of helping me to deal with the aging process, I think. So like Leonard Cohen once said, I ache in the places where I used to play. And that's Rebus. It's a great line, okay. though, isn't it? It's a great line. You, um, you get... I think there's nothing sweeter than having dreams come true in some ways and, that you're, and you know, things you've imagined. And it happened for you with Brian Cox mm. playing with us. We're going to play a bit of it because it's marvellous. I miss the pub. Pubs plural. All pubs. Pubs many and various. <laughs> I'd even risk the ones I wouldn't normally visit. As an ex-cop, there are places you know to avoid. People with long memories. And uh, your face might just be the one that'll set them off. But I, I'd risk it. Do you know, when he did that as well, the commitment with the map of Edinburgh behind him and everything, that's a real respectful touch, isn't it? If people don't know, he, Brian Cox was in lockdown in Upper State New York. Um, went to make the next series of succession and he addressed his cabin as though it was an Edinburgh tenement as far as possible. So he's got a map of Edinburgh, he's got a bottle of whiskey, he's, he has dog food because Rebus has a dog, Brian Cox does not have a dog but he went and bought some dog food. And originally when the first Rebus book came out, Charlie, I was, Brian Cox was kind of my choice for playing him on screen. Oh, so you had, you did? You, so yeah, but he was busy in Hollywood so it never came to pass and so we finally, all these years later, we managed to get Brian Cox to play Rebus and age appropriate as well, so that was lovely. What about Rebus looking forward now? Well, you know, um, if I can get past this year off, um, hopefully there's one more book. Um, uh, when people read this new book, it does end on a bit of a cliffhanger. So we need to know what happens. I need to know what happens next. You know? The only way to find out what happens next is to write another book. It's funny, isn't it? I've, I've heard you uh, talking about your writing, and it is like it happens to you. Like, you start writing, and then the story happens to you. Yeah, I mean, I, when I start a book, even this new, this one, which I, I, you know, typed into my phone on holiday, I didn't know the ending. I mean, I had a vague idea of the theme I wanted to explore, which is bed cops. And, um, and I just went from there. I found a plot that would allow me to explore that theme. And then I just started writing the book as though I were a detective, knowing as little as the detectives know. And as they're finding stuff out, I'm finding stuff out. And then you just hope, hope, hope that towards the end of the first draft, you will work out what the heck is going on. Uh, and the book always tells me, the book always says, this is who did it, this is what happened, this is why it happened. If you want to hang around, uh, I've got a great idea for a story. Does it involve jigsaws? Jigsaws. I I've got a great idea. Get Charlie a jigsaw, he'll love it. So Ian Rankin, thank you very much for joining thank us. You um, the latest Reaper's book, A Heart Full of Headstones, is out a week today. I really have got a good idea for a story. Headlines are coming up. <laughs> Three, two, one. Bring it on! Six celebrities and their partners.